This is a Swift Conqueror 630 SAL. I'm going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van, you've got your jockey wheel, hitch, and handbrake, which will take you through in person here on site. In the front locker, you have your two gas bottle tie downs. As you can see at the back there, to maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles you can carry at any point. And up on the bulkhead, you have your gas regulator and gas isolator valve. Should you ever need to use it, just pull it around 90 degrees to isolate the gas should you need to do that. On the side of the van, we've got the water pump connection, which very simply pushes into the side of the van. And the pickup pipe itself drops down inside the ACK roll. You've then got your heating and hot water flue. Um, normally there'd be the cover on here, we've actually taken it off for cleaning it. Um, so that'll go back on, but when you are on site and you need to ignite the gas systems, you would need to make sure this cover is removed. Motor mover and wheel nuts, we'll talk the wheel nuts while you're here on site, so you can see they've been torqued correctly. And then we'll demonstrate the motor mover so you can see that is also working correctly. Locker for underneath the bed at the rear of the van, very simple, uh, to access the storage area. Toilet flush tank, you open up this tank here, open up the door and drop the door down and it will take three and a half litres of water and a capful of the pink fluid prior to use. You've got in here your toilet locker, it hasn't been cleaned here yet so I do apologise. Pull the yellow handle up, neck will turn out so the waste can be tipped away. The yellow cap here is a measure for the blue fluid and on the back of the cassette itself you'll find a yellow pressure relief button so when you're tipping the waste away it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. Before you use the cassette you'll need to put one litre of water in here and a cap full of the blue fluid. So pink fluid in the top, blue fluid in the bottom. You did actually forget to mention when we walk past the wind down legs. The wind down legs are there for stabilising the caravan not lifting the caravan as you can see underneath the van. So when you are on site, you put them down to the ground so they touch the ground. You would never lift the caravan with the wind down legs as it could potentially damage the floor of the caravan. You also have two more of those on the back of the caravan, on either side. As you can see, there's two on the back of the van. I haven't got them down for the uh, demonstration at the moment, just so we can uh, get it done. And when it's ready for you to pick up, then we'll have one of the legs down on the back when you arrive on site. Back of the van, you've got your heat uh, fridge vents. They are essentially there to allow hot air out the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air in. Behind the top one, there'll also be a gas flue for when you're running the fridge on gas. Then have your battery locker with your quick release terminals on top. Um, very easy to use. You pull up the blue cap or push them down to a blue or red cap to push up to release and push down to um, connect to the battery. You then got your mains power leak coming into the side of the van. Um, and that will connect to the power on site. You've got your wet storage locker at the front of the van with a three pin socket in there, just there, and your barbecue gas point down the front. Coming inside the van now. Above the door, you have your control panel for the caravan. So you have your main power switch on the left hand side here, you have your internal lighting, your water pump run, which I'll come to in a moment battery level for the battery on board the van and your onboard water tank level. Now you'll notice here it says water tank full. With these control panels, um, when it is actually full, it's actually on the three quarter on this end. So when this white line is in line with the blue mark here, I'm sure once you get used to it, you'll probably remove this little uh, reminder. But when it's in line with that mark there, the onboard water tank is full. Um, at that point, you'd need to stop the water going to the tank by turning the pump off. Um, just so it doesn't continue to fill it and you'll change over the valves accordingly in the front uh, under the front seating area which I'll explain to you in a moment. So to fill the water system on board the van you're first of all going to need to come underneath this seat at the front and underneath here you'll find a yellow valve. Now that yellow valve is the drain down valve for the onboard water tank here. Underneath the seat on the right hand side here it should be a second valve, no, there isn't on this van, so it's just the one valve for this van. So you've got the drain down valve just here. To fill the water system up, that yellow valve needs to be in the position it's in now, as the water system is already filled at the moment. To drain the system down, you'd lift this valve up and it'll drain all the water onto the floor under the van. So to fill the onboard water tank, um, you'd have all the taps open on the hot side as you would to fill the water system normally. However, underneath the seat, so this is the onboard water tank under here, and then you've got your water heater tank that fills regardless of which way you fill the system. 
So just here, if you want to fill the onboard water tank, you need to put that valve to the position here. And you also need to put the white valve on the right hand side here to the right hand side also. You then make sure all the taps are open on the hot side. As they are now. And then you turn the water pump on above the door. At that point, it'll start filling the onboard water tank from the, from the external water supply straight to that big water tank at the front. Now, if you want to fill just the hot water tank, which is what I advise, because to be quite honest, you're gonna to have to fill that tank and then fill your aqua back up with 40 liters of water. So it's easier, essentially, to run straight from your external source of water. So that is the yak roll on the outside of the van. To do that, you leave the white valve on the left-hand side of the van in the position it is now. You come over to the silver valve on the right-hand side, and you put the valve into that position. Again, this is to fill the water system up. You'll then open the tap up again, as it is now, and turn the water pump on. Essentially, whichever way you fill this water system, you need to make sure that the water system is full before you start trying to heat the water. The way you tell if the water system is full, whether it be the onboard water tank at the front or the um, hot water tank, is to make sure you have water running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan. At that point, you shut all of the taps off. So it's the tap in the kitchen, the tap in the bathroom, and the tap on the shower. At that point, once all of that water system is full, you can start warming the water on board the caravan. So in this cupboard down here, see here which is the one next to the left hand side of the fridge you'll notice you have a control panel with 12 volt fuses which you they're in the caravan manual there'll be a guide to what each of these fuses are for the same as the trip switches down below but the trip switches also have a label just inside the door here to say what each one is for but on the right hand side you'll see you've got four switches now you've got a car and van switch essentially if you're towing down the road you need to have this switch here on the caravan side Oh, sorry, the car side, sorry, which is the top. If you turn down the road, you'll have it on car. If you're on site, you'll need to have it on the van mode at the bottom. And essentially, that tells the electrical system which way the 12 volt is flowing from. So when you're towing down the road, you need it on car so you can operate the fridge as a cool box. And so it also charges the battery on board the caravan. Below that, you have your battery charger, which, as you can see, is red. And you can leave that on at all times. Top right-hand side here, you have your space heater switch, which is the main power to the controls for the heater. Again, you can leave that one on, on at all times. One on the bottom right here, it says water heater, as you can see, is the electric water heating for the system. So when you turn that switch on, the electric water heater will start warming up. You wouldn't leave this on at all times um, unless the water system is full, like it is now. If that water system was empty, you would need to make sure that switch is turned off. The same as the gas water heating would need to be turned off if the system isn't full. So we're just going to leave that on for now so it warms up when you arrive on site here. But that is your control panel inside the cupboard down there. Like I said, if you're towing, you need to have it on car. If you're on site, you need to have it on van. Battery charge you can have on at all times, the same as a space heater. And the water heater you'd only have on essentially when you're set up on site and you have water in the system. On the opposite side of the van, just above the heater itself, you will see a switch that says Ultra Store. Don't think of it as an Ultra Store, think of it as a water store. To get the gas system to ignite on board the van, simply spin the dial around to the gas symbol. You'll have a green light, which you can't currently see at the moment because it's the uh, light in the van. There's a green light behind here, which essentially means it's um, trying to ignite. If the red light appears next to it, which it will do at the moment because this is the gas water heating, it will mean it has failed to ignite on gas, which it would do because there is no gas bottle on board. When it has ignited, though, the green pilot light will stay lit on its own and you can control the water temperature between 30 and 70 degrees you will need to use the gas system to boost the shower or to boost the water system when you are showering on board the van as the electric on its own will not warm up the water system quick enough for showering down below here you have your ultra heat so the ultra heat is the heating on board the caravan so like i said you need to have that switch on in the cupboard so the uh, space heater switch on down the side here you'll see 500, 1000 and 2000. What this relates to is the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. The only way you'll know how much power you've got coming into the caravan is by asking the site office when you arrive on your holiday. Here on site we can run 500 watts. Now you can just about see a little glimmer of green light there. 
which essentially means the heater is working. And then when it is working, you can control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the center here between one and nine. It essentially relates to the amount of heating elements it's gonna warm up inside the heater. If you want to turn the heating off, you can spin it back to the zero position just here. You can also run the heating on gas. Now on the dial on the right hand side here, you can spin the dial round to get the gas to come on if the gas bottle is connected. Hold down the bottom and it has a self igniter built in. So when it's ignited, you'll have a pilot light in this window down the front around a 45 degree angle from the top of the heater. So from the top, around a 45 degree angle as we're sort of looking at the heater now. Once it is ignited, you'll hold down the gas valve for a further five to 10 seconds, then slowly release the valve. And then you can control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. Microwave, hob, uh, microwave and the electric hob ring on top here will only work when you connect it to 240 volt. The rest of the hob, grill and oven will work on gas. The fridge here will work on either 240 gas or 12 volt while you're towing. To turn the fridge on, press, and press the power button and the fridge will come on. It's waiting for it to load up. At the moment it's trying to ignite on gas. The blue dot here at the bottom is actually a pilot light for the gas system. If that blue light flashes at any point it means, and you're on gas, it means the gas system has failed to ignite. Hit the button again, or the grey button on the left hand side, and you can change your power source to mains 240. Now on mains 240 or gas, you can control the temperature of the fridge on the button on the right hand side. You can also go to 12 volt mode. Now essentially that is where that button in the cupboard that we said about with the car and the van is very important. It needs to be on car when you're towing down the road so the fridge operates on the 12 volt mode here and essentially it makes the fridge work as a cool box. But like I said, if you're not on car mode as well, it won't charge the battery on board the van. To turn the fridge off, you'll press and hold the power button and the fridge will turn back off. Going into the bathroom now, which is the last part of the caravan we're going to go through. The toilet has an electric flush on top, as you can see here. You also then have a full indicator light for the toilet waste cassettes. This will illuminate red when the toilet waste cassette is full. The toilet seat does turn for your convenience. However, in this van, it's probably not something you're going to do. However, if you need to turn the toilet seat, you can turn it left to right. Um, and essentially, if the toilet is turned at all, it will actually stop you from uh, from removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the van. Below the toilet, you have this grey waste handle here. That grey waste handle is essentially there to allow the toilet waste into the cassette under the van. And again, if that cassette is open when you try to remove the cassette from under the van, then it will not allow you to do that due to the fact it will lock the cassette in place, the same as the toilet seat being turned. So that is the Swift Conqueror 630 SAL. If you have any further questions on the van, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. Thank you for now. Bye bye.